Jets are back at home for the first time in three weeks. Sam Houston State hosting Jarvis Christian for college basketball tonight on ESPN. And welcome inside Johnson Coliseum, Matt Peterson with Rob Hip. And the Bearcats really want to bounce back after a tough loss at Oral Roberts on Saturday. Well, on Saturday, only shooting 28% from the field, 24 turnovers for Sam Houston State. Tonight, they're going to have to do a good job defending the three-point line as well. One of 19 in two victories in the home opener and that second victory. That's an area they've excelled from. And then finally, they're going to have to force the turnovers. They've done a great job so far this season. Sam Houston on track for a good game if they can do that. And now our HEB no player does more impact players beginning with Jarvis Christian. It's Brianna Page. Five foot six junior guard, 15 points against Dillard University a couple weeks ago. Well, the second leading scorer on the team, 15 points versus Dillard, four rebounds and three steals should be an impact player here. And for Sam Houston State, it's the junior guard, Faith Cook. The UTEP transfer, she leads the team and assists. Three steals on the season. Look for her to have a breakout game here this evening. H-E-B, the official grocer of the Sam Houston State Bearcats and the Bearcats Sports Network. The Bearcats, last time at Johnson Coliseum, November 10th against Louisiana, four-point win, road trip, was not friendly. Losses at Texas Tech at Ole Miss and most recently at Oral Roberts on Saturday, 64-41. Matt Peterson with Rob Hip. And a few stats really jump off the page. First turnovers for Sam Houston State, 24 at Oral Roberts and three of 18 from downtown. Yeah, their three-point shooting wasn't where it wanted to be. The overall field goals were, wasn't where it wanted to be for Sam Houston. Tonight, they're playing an opponent here, an NAIA school. But this is a familiar house, of course, for Sam Houston, an area that they've won the opening two games versus Howard Payne in Louisiana, now on a three-game skid, trying to rebound here tonight, a great opportunity to get that weight off their shoulders. If you look previously at that road trip, 31 turnovers in the loss at Ole Miss. The Bearcats lost by just seven. Might have been different if not for those 31 turnovers. And points from turnovers, 32 for Ole Miss on that night. The prior game, Texas Tech, 21 turnover. So against higher level power five competition, two of those three games, the turnover's been a problem. You like to see the Bearcats really take care of the ball tonight. That we would, and again, getting into the paint, gotta get to the line. They've been able to get to the line this season, but just over 60%. They've gotta do a better job of that here as the opening tip underway. Here we go, the Bearcats in white, Jarvis Christian in yellow, the tip was won by Courtney Cleveland, who started in the Los Angeles Roberts on Saturday. Left wing three from Harrell off the mark. Now the starting lineup for the Bearcats. Presented by Miller Lite, the official beer of the Bearcats Sports Network. So critical second chance opportunities after the offensive rebound, giving Sam Houston another chance here. Inbound play from Faith Cook. Top of the key for Harold. Well, these teams met last year here in Huntsville. Bearcats won 100 to 55. Euro step, two shots coming. Good work to get to the line from Courtney Cleveland. Now the Bearcats tonight start with Osborne, Cook, Cleveland, Harold, and McKinney. Yeah, Cleveland from Arlington, Texas, transfer from Pratt Community College. Only at the line six times here this season. She's two for six. We know how the Bearcats want to play under second-year head coach Raven Justice, the reigning Southland Conference Coach of the Year. High tempo, full court presser. We'll see it here after the second free throw is made. They sub a lot, they press a lot, they don't make it easy at all for the opposition. A good drive coast to coast, but the layup is missed by Tamaya Harris, sophomore from Fort Worth. Harrell fakes the three. Osborne open three. Got it. 
Wide open look for Osborne at three-point line, trying to make it generous here this afternoon or this evening for Sam Houston State. Now Osborne getting an opportunity to start here tonight. Oftentimes a reserve player, tenacious defense, but a chance to get extended minutes tonight against Jarvis Christian. Uh, Jarvis Christian NAIA program, northeast of Tyler and Hawkins, Texas. I play in the Red River Athletic Conference. Really tough year last season. One and 28 overall. One and 17 in the Red River Athletic Conference. And here this season trying to pick up their first victory. It's going to be a tough task tonight, but you see these teams come in at 0 and 7. It doesn't mean that they're out. You go back and, and look at other sports, football, Northwestern State, Sam Houston, that game was slated. These teams are hungry for a win. Good defense from the Cats. They pick up the ball inside their own paint. Harold the other way. 5 nothing Cats, 90 seconds gone. Harold missed the layup. Offensive rebound from Cleveland. Now it's top of the key for Faith Cook. Osborne, extra pass, they get it inside. Ball lost by McKinney. Probably should have gone straight up with it, decided to dribble. Osborne had a, a wide open lane there, but just did not find her teammate. And that'll result the other way, a basket on the other side. Jarvis Christian on the board. Olivia Essex out of Atlantic City, New Jersey. Offensive board for the Cats. Osborne, 17 footers in and out. Offensive rebound, Cleveland with the put back. Another offensive board for the Cats. This time, Harold. Cook driving. Missed the floater. Nice look there by Faith Cook. She had a good angle inside the paint, just couldn't finish that shot, but expect more of that from her here this evening. Sierra Sanders cleared the boards. You see the Bearcats out beyond the perimeter defending. A miss left-handed floater by Naisha Fisher. Bearcats have already taken seven shots from the field. Have out-rebounded Jarvis Christian 6-1 in the early going. McKinney spinning, tried the extra pass. It was stolen, but she steps right out of bounds. Good hustle. Deja Monroe with the initial steal. Yeah, Monroe, she saw that ball right where it was going, focused, laser eye focus on that ball, able to tip it away. And Unfortunately, the ball goes out of bounds for Jarvis Christian. Sam Houston will have it, but that's the kind of aggression that this Jarvis Christian team is going to need to have tonight against Sam Houston State. Our cat's preparing to bring on three off the bench. You know, speaking about those substitutions here in just a few moments, we talked pregame before we went on this evening. This is a very fast-paced tempo, Sam Houston State women's Bearcat team. A lot of substitutions. That's the way that Coach Justice likes to run this team and expect more of that here tonight. Now the officials here tonight sorting something out. That's Derek Holman, the head coach on one end. Raven Justice, second-year head coach on the other. A technical foul. We're not sure what for, but Harold will go to the free throw line to shoot it. Harrell, 75% free throw shooter, and nails that one, her fifth one of the season. Our officials here tonight, Rochelle Bennett, Tiffany Bridges, and Chantel Bogues. Well, Osborne will inbound. Out of Spring, Texas, Oak Ridge High School. McKinney and Harold to the bench, along with Cook. Aramis checks in for the first time. Jalen Walker as well, along with Lachey Haynes. Here's Walker. Around this top of the key. A zone defense here from Jarvis Christian, and they get a steal. Excellent work from the Bulldogs. It was Young who got a hand in the passing lane. Traveling, she tried to spin at the left block, but an extra step from Deja Monroe. I like the aggression by Monroe early. We saw just a few moments ago tipping a ball here, the extra step, but still trying to get in that paint, bringing a little extra aggression to start this ball game and trying to find some life for her team. Run, 
As between the leg dribble from Walker, she drives left it short. A miss from Jalen Walker. Back the other Walker way had a over. cold shooting night at Oral Roberts, 2 of 12 on Saturday, 0 of 5 from downtown. So much depends on her offense in the system for Sam Houston State. The only seven offensive boards in that previous game, 31 on the defensive side of things, but they we talk about so much. The offense getting those boards leads to second chance opportunities, a very critical aspect of the game. Trying to pick up on that here tonight. Here's Walker from the corner. Got it. That ends a 0 for 6 from the field drought for the Bearcats. Walker, the only all Southland pick in the preseason for the Bearcats. All Southland first team for Jalen Walker. She's averaging nine points per game so far this season. Third highest total on the team. Back the other way, Cleveland with a terrific block. Offensive rebound for Jarvis Christian. Put back his miss. Second offensive board, then a steal from Walker. Out to Aramis. Walker. Aramis again, lobbed inside. Lachey Haynes out for Harold. Open three. On the Bearcats, three of four from deep today. Ball movement critical again, Harold. She's been open from that three point line here so far early in this ball game, able to connect with that one. In this corner, Asia Monroe against Walker. Good feed. Excellent defense from Cleveland. She should straight up. And the rebound finally cleared by Walker. Out to Harold. Spot up three, Aramis. Haynes with the offensive board. Yeah, that three-point line really hasn't been her shot here this season. But if she can get inside, Aramis really connects from the field goals. That's an area where she's been good this year. Another three for the Cats. This one from Rachel Harrell. She's really struggled from downtown this season. Two of 19 before tonight. Timeout call by Jarvis Christian. So if they can get Harold going, it will really help the Bearcats as they head into the conference season. 16 to two cats, under five minutes left, first quarter in Huntsville. I enjoy seeing kids, regardless of their age, see the light bulb go on and they have that aha moment. In 1997, I started Tomorrow's Promise, the Montessori School of Huntsville with three students. The Small Business Development Center helped me with classes on how to open a business. We also helped Kay market through social media, website analysis, and develop funding opportunities. We have grown to 38 teachers and over 220 students. Welcome back, Matt Peterson, Rob Hip, Johnson Coliseum, Huntsville, Texas. Bearcats up to a 16-2 start putting Saturday's loss at Oral Roberts for the moment in the rearview mirror, and they come out with full court presser here. Well, they're on an 11-0 run here in the last 257 after things a little bit slow, four turnovers before that break. But again, that 11-0 run right now for Sam Houston State. Our cats currently with Aramis, Amber Leggett, who's checked in for the first time, Lachey Haynes, Rachel Harrell, and Madeline Batista on the floor for Sam Houston State. Left wing three is short. Volleyball for the rebound. It's brought down by Jarvis Christian and Tamara Duncan. The missed three was from Deja Monroe. Reach in foul on Harold. It'll be an inbound pass for Jarvis Christian. The Bulldogs one of nine from the field. Well, Shea will head back over to the bench, but Actually, it's Madeline uh, Bastia said, heads back over to the bench and talking about her post play down the defensive side, not allowing Jarvis to get down inside that paint. You stand that tall, it's going to be hard to score on her. Now we will stay here. I'm it for Jarvis Christian here tonight, but credit them to go on the road to a Division I foe, a, a school that had a really good season last year in Sam Houston State. 
One in 28 last year for Derek Hallman. Now in his second season, he'll try to do what Coach Justice did in her first year at Huntsville last year, try to make year two productive and a jump for his team. Yeah, Coach Holman just trying to really turn things around here at Jarvis, of course, as we talked about earlier, no wins yet this season, but it's always good to face a tough opponent that's way ahead of your division. It gives your players a lot of experience, maybe gives an opportunity for some of your younger players to get a lot of valuable playing time as well. That's why you see so many of these games in non-conference schedule like this. After the timeout, Jarvis Christian inbounds. Heavy pressure from the Cats and a reach-in foul called on Leggett. If not, it would have been a breakaway for Haynes. A oh, great double-team effort there, starting with Aramis. Her and her teammate got right there on that play, forcing the ball to go in the direction that it did. We're going to see a lot of that here this evening as well. A Leggett whistle for the foul. She leads the Cats, 17 steals on the season. She's been sort of the breakout player, 14 points per game. She's shooting 43% from the field. 8 of 13 from downtown. That's something she did not have last year, but the early returns are promising from Amber Leggett. Uh, missed assignment back door. Offensive rebound. Uh, the Bearcats might be up 16 to 2, but I know there are some things that don't please Raven Justice right now. Open layups for Jarvis Christian and allowing the offensive rebounds. Yeah, that's been really the difference maker here in this ball game. Now Sam Houston is out rebounded 11 to 4 before we went to the break earlier. But the shooting from Sam Houston, that's been the difference so far. And as you see right there, a grab by Lachey Haynes, snagging that one down. She missed the pull-up jumper. Leggett got the offensive rebound. She's blocked, gets her own loose ball out to Aramis. Here's Leggett. Cool finish with the left hand for Amber Leggett. Oh, Leggett, the athleticism runs in her family. 62% this season from the three-point line. She had a good look. She said, you know what, I'm going to take it inside, takes it in, and scores the two. A blocking foul underneath. Now, Leggett three for three against Oral Roberts on Saturday in the 23-point loss, but she was plagued by foul trouble. Four fouls in under 20 minutes of gameplay. She and Courtney Cleveland both had four. Aramis had four. So another game with the Bearcats best players couldn't go the distance due to fouls. Well, Leggett, as I mentioned earlier, as this free throw is up off the front of the iron. She comes from a storied family of athletes. Her, she's a sister, of course, of former Clemson tight end Jordan Leggett. He was picked fifth round of the 2017 NFL Draft. Her brother is at Texas Tech as a defensive back, Thomas Leggett. And then she has another brother who played collegiately as well, Patrick. So it runs in the family. There's Leggett, top of the key. Back to Walker. Haynes lost the handle, picked up by Walker. Cook slings it inside, an extra step, and a shooter's roll. Good finish from Cleveland. Oh, Cleveland finding that rim through traffic. Sam Houston State has looked like they've had some open lanes to the basket early, maybe a little bit of lack of confidence here to start this ball game as they've been kicking it out, but fortunately they're making the shot and back the other way, another opportunity here for Sam Houston. Miss runner from Harris. Walker misses the three. It'll be Bearcat basketball. It came off Christy Marshall, the 6'2 junior from Hebron, Mississippi. Well, Jalen not afraid to toss up those three-point shots. She's put up 25, now 26 this season, making eight of those. A lazy pass picked off in midcourt. A miss layup. Haynes brought down the rebound. It's going to stay with the Bearcats after the miss from Deja Monroe. And those are the plays that are simply inexcusable for a Division I team trying to win the Southland Conference to turn the ball over on an inbounds play from under the basket, throwing it out to the top of the three-point line. Yeah, that's an area you go back to last week with those turnovers, an area that they have continued to struggle as a lane there for Amber Leggett starting to see a little bit of rhythm here on the inside to that paint. Well, the Bearcats want to make noise in the Southland again this year and get to the NCAA tournament, win the conference tournament. They're going to have to clean up the turnovers. Starts in games like these on simple inbounds plays like we just witnessed. Two on one opportunity here and now rewarded going to the line. That's the aggression that you need. 
You're coming back down the other way after a nice play. You're with your teammate. You go up for the shot. You miss it, but you want to see more of that. You get to the line. Now you've got to convert the free throws. Mina Henderson checks in, freshman from Neptune, New Jersey. <laughs> Cook makes the first. Sixth game the season for Ramina, averaging eight points per contest. Another option for Coach Justice, who empties her bench and uses everybody because of the style of play, full court press, high effort defense throughout. Five second violation, excellent defense from Hem Henderson with help from Leggett. I was gonna say that all started with Ramina Henderson in the backcourt, bringing the pressure. You start getting to those situations, that all started with her allowing her teammates to force that turnover. Faith Cook. Back to Cook. Nice feed, no look inside, but it was lost by Leggett. Stolen by Walker on the outlet pass. Oh, Walker there so fast, able to rip that one down through the air, give her team another opportunity. Walker from deep. Oh, Walker feeling it from the three-point line. The Bearcats five of eight as a team from downtown. And she almost Shot had another steal is there. off. Back the other way, she almost had another still as she reached around. You start getting those plays, the confidence starts building, all of a sudden you feel like, you know what, I can go out here and do anything. Final chance for the Cats, it's Cook, sidestep three. What an ending to the first quarter for the Bearcats. They hit six of nine from downtown. They end the quarter on a 25-0 run. After one quarter in Huntsville, all Sam Houston State. This is how the end of the first quarter looked. Side step three from Faith Cook. Looks like James Harden there, that new thing he added to his uh, repertoire for this season, that little side step three. Continues to push the envelope in the rules of the NBA. Oh, you know these young women, they watch the players in the NBA. They say, you know, that'd be kind of fun to do that during the game. We saw it there just a few moments ago, Matt. Well, it was 100 to 55 Bearcats last season in the first year for Derek Holman and Jarvis Christian. So this score is surprising in some ways, but the big difference in competition, Jarvis Christian really trying to build something in Hawkins, Texas. In NAIA level, the Bearcats really finding their groove in their second season, the Jet Raven Justice in the Southland Conference. It's a mismatch tonight, but lessons can be learned for both teams. Yeah, and Sam Houston's doing a good job tonight. They're forcing some turnovers, but more importantly, when they force it, they're scoring on those turnovers as well. They're getting points off of the turnovers, 15 to two, only allowing one basket for Jarvis in that first quarter with a 30 to two lead. But then back the other way, you've got to get a hand up. That was a wide open shot. A little bit of a miscommunication there by Lachey Haynes, leaving that defender wide open. Now Duncan has the first four points for Jarvis Christian. Now Cook misses the corner three.
Open three on this left corner. And that's there. Five quick points for Jarvis Christian and a timeout for Raven Justice. That's a good timeout by Coach Justice. That's a teaching moment as Walker trying to get back did not get back soon enough, and that led to a wide open three point shot. A little run here from Jarvis Christian. Bearcats up 23. Welcome back, Matt Peterson, Rob Hip. Bearcats up 30 to seven. A little five nothing run here from Jarvis Christian early in the second quarter led to a Raven Justice timeout for the Cats. Shaylin Walker, top of the key for Aramis. Aramis from deep. Another three ball for the Cats. A wide open look and Aramis had that one. And back the other way. Once again, incredible defense by Sam Houston State University. You get the shot and one going to the line. Well, Leggett might be the best athlete on this team. Good chance she is. Just refining those basketball skills. And here as a sophomore, she is doing just that. Leading score, most steals on the team, and high percentage shooter so far. 43% from the field, 8 of 13 from downtown. Three of six from the free throw line of the season. It's just five games in. But she might be the player that can make the jump that makes this a great Sam Houston State team this year. Here she is with another steal. She is fired up over there alongside her teammate Faith Cook, as she should be. It's the aggression you have to bring in these ball games and, and playing through this. It's going to be so important when conference play starts here on December the 18th at Northwestern State. That'll be at Natchitoches. Inbounded for Leggett. It's Bearcat basketball. Once again, Leggett there. Talking about her defense and the way she continues that domination on the defensive side. And you know, you were mentioning earlier just about where Sam Houston State is. And we go back to a game at Old Miss on November the 26th. There was only a six-point loss, 69 to 75, against a very tough SEC team. We were talking in the break. That kind of puts you on the radar for where Sam Houston may be this year. A Walker with the steal and two more. And that's one where they turn the ball over 31 times. If they cut that to 25 or 20, they probably win the game. And it might change their outlook when they go to Texas Tech. And Oral Roberts, you need that first big win under your belt. They beat Louisiana at home and another non-conference uh, game. It's Similar competition, but that was a goal. But if you can beat a Power 5 team early in the year, it really changes things the rest of the season. Yeah, and a lot of them for Sam Houston State. Is that shot off the back of the iron? You talk about going to play at UTSA on the 8th, at OU on the 15th, and Oklahoma up at Norman before conference play starts. Naisa Fisher missed for Jarvis Christian, and then it was Cook with the miss for Sam Houston State. Bearcats defense giving Jarvis Christian all sorts of problems here in the first half. They break the pressure here though. Miss layup, offensive rebound, and the putback is there. Big size difference that time. And it was Tierra Sanders capitalizing. Yeah, Sanders had a nice step on it and nowhere really for Cook to get in front. That was a good job in the paint. McKinney spinning to finish. Bearcats shooting 47% as a team. Another steal, Leggett for three. I call a reach in foul on Jalen Walker. Rachel Harrell returns. Oh, Cook's another one I think that could really help this team. Number 10 for Sam Houston State. She had to sit out last year due to NCAA transfer rules. But the prior two years at UTEP, she's from Baytown, Goose Creek High School. All date honors. Was the number 27 point guard in the country for the class of 2016, according to ESPN's Hoop Girls. Was a star at UTEP. Had to sit out last year, and she is ready to go this season. And she understands the game. She understands how important it is to move the ball around on a deep three here. And that was shot clock violation, but 
going back to Cook, understanding how to move the ball around, the assist leader on the team coming into this game with 13 so far this season. So critical to know where to get your the ball to your team. She's been able to do that. And she's only going to get better. You talk about a player that's only a junior, and a lot of these girls, as the season goes on, getting valuable playing minutes, they'll continue where they picked off last year. Haynes returns for Harrell. Be a shot clock violation. Bearcat basketball. 12-2 run for the Cats has opened up a 42-9 lead. 5.50 left in the second quarter. A good body position for McKinney. She was able to seal off Christy Marshall and draw the foul. It's a 12-2 run over the last two and a half minutes or so for Sam Houston State. And again, they've been able to capitalize. It's good to get the turnovers. It's good to get the ball. But you have to capitalize and make sure that you're making baskets back the other way. They've been able to do that here this evening. Out to Walker. Oh, that's a travel. Uh, Ramina Henderson. An extra step. Walker steals it in the corner. McKinney misses from 14 feet. Aramis pulls in the rebound. Walker, quick release. Left it short. Rebound hauled in by Duncan. Aisha Fisher here for the Bulldogs. Rebound from Walker after the miss from Christy Marshall. Marshall had a good step right there, just wasn't able to get that one in on the right side. Good feed and then one opportunity coming from Lachey Haynes after the nice bounce pass, Ramita Henderson. Yeah, Ramita giving her teammate an opportunity to reward herself at the line for another and one opportunity, the second one that we've seen here so far this evening. Well, Henderson, a true freshman out of Neptune High School, St. John Vianney High School. Deja Monroe checks in for the Bulldogs. Aisha Fisher to the bench. And you're starting to see more of a nationwide recruiting search here for Raven Justice. You know, Leggett's from Florida. Ramina Henderson's from New Jersey. Another freshman in the campus from Kansas City. Good pressure from the Cats in midcourt. It'll be a 10 second call. Well, the pressure yet again. You know, going back to Coach Justice, and you brought up a really good point about these players from all over the nation. A lot of times at a lot of schools, you'll see players from within their home state. That really shows that you're going out, you're reaching for talent. Awesome job by Coach Justice, and it shows how this program has turned things around in her two-year tenure here. McKinney's spinning, left it short, offensive rebound. Out to Haynes, Aramis. Good touch from 12 feet. Nice job by Aramis. She passed up the three, felt that she had a better opportunity on the field goal from the side, found it, connected with the bottom of the net. That's a smart play from the senior guard. Right wing three, off the mark from Harris. Jarvis Christian struggling to get back in transition. It was McKinney the first one down the floor. Jarvis Christian calls time. It's an 18 to two run for the Cats who are up big in Huntsville. Well, the Bearcats trying to integrate all these players some ways, Robbie, it has to be tough to build some on-court chemistry with so much substitution. But I think for Coach Justice, she likes that. There's no sacred cow, if you will. There's no player that's guaranteed 35 minutes a game that's going to play. It's going to come down to execution, discipline, and doing what she asks of the players. I think it's just buying into the team concept. It starts from the leadership down. Coach Justice brings that here to Sam Houston State University, knowing and teaching her girls, hey, it takes an entire team. 
no matter if you're getting the full minutes in the game or you're only getting two or three, trying to build that and develop that culture, that's something that's so unique and, and done a very good job here at this university. Good success at Prairie View a and and Prairie View, Texas, about an hour or so west of here. Great hand up by Cleveland back on the other way to get our team in rhythm for offense and the turnaround jumper there. Again, it just lead to that. You start on the defensive side, it sets up your offense. Now, Ramina Henderson there did the dirty work, then she found Harrell. Nice hands there. Cook knocked it away. Picked up by Madeline Batista. Another layup. Now, Bearcats just dominant in transition here tonight. That was two for Courtney Cleveland. You thought for a moment she may stop and let her team come down, finds an, her open teammate, another easy basket. That one threw off the defense. Just is still coaching with ferocity on the sideline, as you'd expect. Now free throws coming, good use of the body inside. Tierra Sanders. Yeah, Tierra from Chicago, Illinois, and a nice opportunity there off that right side, and now she's drawing the foul. Not to be outdone on the other side for Jarvis Christian, even at a NAIA level, a lot of these players from all over the nation. We talk about Chicago, several players from the Mississippi area. Yeah, the Bearcats. Aramis is senior from Pembroke High, and she has been here for four years now. She's a Floridian, but the Florida Pipeline slowly opening up. Leggett, a sophomore from Navarre, Florida. And you have Natalie Batista, the sophomore transfer from Orlando out of Daytona State Community College. Two now from New Jersey, one from New Orleans, one from Kansas City. Good crossover dribble. And a finish off the glass. Naisha Fisher. Now oh, a steal at midcourt. Good work from Jarvis Christian, left-handed layup. Rihanna Page got there. The Bulldogs have upped the defensive intensity. Nearly another steal, but it'll be a call to reach in by Fisher. Fisher starting to show her ability here as an athlete on this ball court. And we've mentioned this before with men's basketball. It's the same here with women's. Winning a college basketball game at any level is tough. And, and you don't want to count out a team, Jarvis Christian. But of course, Sam Houston State, they've been here. They've been in this situation to where they know what it takes to win against smaller schools but again, it's the opportunity, and, and it's still tough. It's not easy by any means. Even if the score may seem lopsided, it's still tough. You gotta come out here, you gotta practice, play every day. There's a lot that goes into these games. Two free throws for Cook. Started the final 18 games of her last season at UTEP a couple years ago. Good pressure from Harrell. And a man defense, name of the game for Coach Raven Justice. There's a reach in foul from Faith Cook. <laughs> Cook went from one side of the state to the other, from Baytown to El Paso, and now a little closer to home here in Huntsville. The Goose Creek High School native. It's a fun drive, nine hours from where I'm at in Austin sometimes, you know. You just get on I-10, you head west, slow down because you'll get pulled over in the small towns, though. But it's always a lot of fun. Harrell left it short from deep. She chases down her own rebound. Nice bounce pass inside, just a bit long. On the miss that time from Adeline Batista. Good bounce pass, transition basketball the other way for the Bulldogs. It was Deja Monroe with the layup. And Sam Houston 
was shooting pretty hot from that three-point line and there on from the corner from that field goal. But again, things cooled off a little bit here. Maybe a little bit of rhythm for Jarvis Christian on the inside, starting to find out what Sam Houston's doing. Now, nice to see Harrell bypass the three, get a more makeable shot and drain it from 15 feet. They've tried to make her more of a complete basketball player. Driving, defending. Here she is in transition out in front of Aramis. Finds a spot on the baseline for two more. It's a three-on-one opportunity. You get back, you find your teammate, you get the assist. Just fundamental basketball, and they're executing it well. Oh, Harrell, 14 points, five of nine from the field for the Cats. Offensive foul. Charge to Brianna Page. Yeah, great job getting her feet set on that one. Talking about Rachel Harrell from Weatherford out of Brock High School. Brock High School, a 5A school who is, you hear about them a lot at the high school level in the playoffs from season to season. The Eagles, I believe. Harrell, the only player in double figures, 14 points in 10 minutes plus five rebounds. Aramis driving, good touch as the shot clock was winding down. Caught by Haynes for two seconds left over the backboard. But what a run for the Bearcats. They had a 6 nothing run at halftime in Huntsville. Sam Houston State leads 60 to 15. Since 1879, students have come from far and wide to a place unlike any other. A place where tradition runs deep, honor holds special meaning, and orange brings us together. It's a place where friendships are formed and futures take shape. Every day, students discover Sam Houston anew and walk across our stage united as alumni, united as Bearcats. Join the Alumni Association today. Welcome back, Johnson Coliseum, Huntsville, Texas. Matt Peterson with Rob Hip. Bearcats, a 60 to 15 lead here at halftime. We take a look at the CHI St. Luke's Health Emergency Center upcoming schedule for Jarvis Christian. They'll open up conference play at the NAIA level coming up in the next couple of weeks. The Red River Athletic Conference, couple of conference games, LSU Shreveport followed by LSU Alexandria. Alexandria, good team, 14 and four last year in conference. They're receiving votes in the latest poll. Yeah, and then facing teams like Hudson Tiltson down in the area as well as Our Lady of the Lake. This isn't by any means a, an easy schedule for Jarvis Christian. Our Lady of the Lake finished 12th in the country, 16 and two last year. That'll be the toughest tets in the upcoming schedule. They'll end things against Texas College. CHI St. Luke's Health Emergency Center, the official emergency center of the Bearcats Sports Network. Bearcats up big at home at halftime. Back. Family, friends, and the community enjoying this one at Johnson Coliseum. The Bearcats back home for the first time in more than three weeks. Up big over NAIA foe Jarvis Christian at halftime. Matt Peterson with Rob Hip. We look now at the CHI St. Luke's Health Emergency Center upcoming schedule for Sam Houston. And some tough foes coming up, including another Power 5 foe, Oklahoma, mid-December. Yeah, you talk about at UTSA down in San Antonio. That's not gonna be a cookie cutter. You go and play at Oklahoma at Norman. That's gonna be another tough game, but it's good to get these out of the way. I always like talking about that because it's so good to get these games and non-conference out of the way. You're playing some very tough talent, helps get you prepared as you head into Southland Conference play. And then a schedule wrinkle. Typically, conference play begins after the holidays, early January. This year, it starts before January. Mid-December at Northwestern State at New Orleans, uh, the opposite of the uh, men's program, which has to open up at home. The, the ladies start on the road, a tough test, two quality opponents. We know no New Orleans, they beat Ole Miss in a prior game. So New Orleans will be a good team in the Southland this season. Yeah, you get those two conference games right in the middle of December, just a couple of weeks away. It's amazing how fast this time always comes around every season. And then the meat of it, you still got one non-conference game versus Wiley College. And then to start things at the new year versus the Big Nice, that's really the heart of where things really get rolling here in the Southland. Our Central 
Arkansas in the mix was picked sixth. New Orleans, just so you know, they were picked eight in the Southland Conference preseason poll. They won at Ole Miss, so maybe the Southland Conference is deeper than some expected. The Bearcats will find out in just a couple of weeks. CHI St. Luke's Health Emergency Center, the official emergency center of the Bearcat Sports Network. More coming up at halftime in Huntsville. All the Bearcats in the first half. Hey Bearcats, take your membership on the go by downloading the Sam Houston State University Alumni Cat app today. Not a member yet? Join the Sam Houston Alumni Association or renew in seconds to enjoy exclusive national benefits on dining, entertainment, and much more. Now that you're in, take some time to explore your exclusive member benefits, read the latest edition of Heritage Magazine, or find an alumni event near you. Click on our travel tile to sign up and explore the globe with our traveling Bearcats, or stay connected to alumni in your area as you take your membership everywhere. Come hang out with the Alumni Association as we tailgate some of the biggest games of the year by showing your alumni member card that is now in the palm of your hand. Download the SHSU Alumni Cat app today in the iTunes or Google Play Store or visit shsu.edu slash cat app. Eat them up, cats. Welcome back. Midweek basketball in Huntsville, Johnson Coliseum. The Bearcats up big at halftime over Jarvis Christian. Now the highlights from the first half. The Bearcats won the first quarter 30 to two. Jarvis Christian more competitive in the second. It was 30 to 13 in the second quarter. But the Bearcats really Worked the ball well and got a lot of good looks in that first half. There's a lot of good looks. Those looks started because of the defensive stops leading in transition. Sam Houston able to find the basket down into the paint, taking care of business as far as shooting in the paint. 24 points in the paint in that first half. That's good numbers, especially after the previous game just a few days ago. Nine different scorers for the Bearcats. Rachel Harrell led everybody with 14 points in 11 minutes. Five of nine from the field. She didn't settle on the three-point line. Her last few looks were about 15 feet from the basket. Well, Harold getting to the line, shooting two of two, taking care of business there. But the three-point shot, she had back-to-back -back threes that really found some rhythm for her team. All Bearcats in the first half. We'll be back with the second half from Huntsville. As a boy, Lorenzo Baez's playground was the streets. When his grandfather suffered a heart attack, one nurse's act of kindness changed his life. Today, he is the first in his family to graduate college, and he's not done yet. He's on his way to becoming a doctor. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Lorenzo defy the odds. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. Welcome back, Johnson Coliseum in Huntsville. The Bearcats up big at halftime, Raven Justice Final instructions before her team takes the court for the third quarter. The Bearcats, one of the best turnarounds in the country last year. They had seven combined wins the prior two years before she was hired. 16 wins last year. They made the Southland Conference Tournament and the respect has arrived. They're now third in the Southland Conference preseason poll with three all-conference selections. We mentioned the first team, all-Southland pick Jalen Walker, Jennifer Rombus and Amber Leggett, both on the All-Southland second team preseason poll. Well, eight letter winners back this season for Sam Houston State University, as you said, picked to finish third here in the Southland. You know, they haven't finished in the top three since sharing the title with Oral Roberts back in 2013. It's a turnaround. That's what you call it. That's exactly what it is. And they're getting the respect in the conference, getting picked at that third spot. A tied for fourth in the Southland last year. A very difficult schedule, including road games at Texas Tech at Ole Miss, at Oklahoma in a couple weeks. They will be tested before they start Southland Conference play. The third quarter begins in Huntsville. Bearcats won 100 to 55 last year. They'll try to surpass 100 this year. It's a moving screen to start the third quarter against Desandria Young. 
Yeah, good job by Faith Cook, able to step in there. And again, another opportunity here for Sam Houston. They've been forcing the ball and you talk about turnovers and points off of those 28 in that first half for the Bearcats. Harrell from the corner, got it! 17 for Harrell, including three from deep. Off the glass, we heard her call window, and she drains it, Deja Monroe. Cook driving, Osborne. Harrell, another three. Well, who knew she was two for 19 from deep for the season? A slow start for the sharpshooter. But she's heating up here tonight, four of six from downtown. You know, I think she knew. She said, I'm going to come in here today and turn that number around. Four three-pointers, finding it from beyond the arc here this evening. Top of the key. Three is short from Harris. Out to Cook. She's ahead of everybody. She was fouled on her way up. Good hustle down court by Desandria Young, who committed the foul. Yeah, great job by Faith Cook and her teammate finding her as she went there on the fast break. Finding the lane. And as you mentioned, the defense getting back and getting a nice knock. But here, going to the line, Faith Cook, she'll be rewarded. You know, Harrell, one of several Bearcats that have started slow from deep. They're shooting 30% as a team, almost identical to their opponents. 30% in college basketball from downtown, not bad. But some of their main players, some of their main three-point shooters have been cold. Jennifer Aramis, historically over 37%, all three years prior. She's at 17%, three of 18 from deep. And there's another moving screen. Oh, a kick is the call, actually. I beg your pardon, the kick called against is Andrea Young. Now, Aramis, first team or a second team all Southland pick. And then Harold, two for 19. Two of your most dependable three point shooters have been cold. Really hard to win games on the road when your best three point shooters aren't making shots. But again, going up against Power Five schools, great defenders at these schools. And as the season progresses and conference play starts in the Southland, I think you'll see some of those numbers start to even out a little bit more. 10 3 Bearcats since halftime. Cleveland runs it down in the corner. Osborne, good bounce pass inside. Nice ball fake, Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland very efficient, eight points, three of four from the field. In the first half, 24 points in the paint by Sam Houston State, and it's a stat that stands out, as you can see why there just moments ago, able to find the rhythm right through into the basket. Running left-hander off the glass, cool finish. The Bearcats the other way. Monroe with the two, and now a steal for the Bulldogs. And a hard foul from Cleveland in transition. Harris now going to the free throw line. Well, does Andre Young credit her with that tip, allowing her offense to get the ball in transition, and that wouldn't have started without Young. Good job there by Young. Out of it to been a Mississippi, Lefferts County High School. First free throw is good. Now Tamaya Harris at the line. Ooh, hard foul. Aramis will get up. Deja Monroe committed the foul. Yeah, Rama smiles over there after her play. Is She is an aggressive ball player. You talk about a senior, the leadership on this team has just been tremendous from her. Walker off a high screen from McKinney, all the way to the basket. 
Yeah, Kiara McKinney set that up, standing so tall at six foot two, allowing her teammate to go around her on the left side. It all starts with her on that end. Walker, the newcomer of the year in the South End Conference last year, second team all South End pick. A foul underneath, charge to Leggett. Walker, a transfer from McLennan Community College. 15 points, three assists per game last year. Good defensive player. Fourth in the league, 2.3 steals per game. Consistently in double figures, 25 at 29 games last year. Open three missed. Rebound by Aramis. One on three in the backcourt, stolen. Good pressure from Jarvis Christian. Aramis pulls in the rebound. Miss from Duffy. Relentless pressure here from Jarvis Christian. They're sending four into the backcourt. And the Cats capitalize. They break the press and a layup for McKinney. Now when you've got four back there, that means someone is going to be open on the other side of the court. Sam Houston doing a good job finding their open players and converting. Nice finish from a tough angle. That was Duffy. Leggett first one down for the layup. A fast-paced transition again. We've seen that so many times here this evening. Sam Houston getting back on the offensive end after a rebound, after a turnover, and able to score. These offenses at an efficiency of an NBA team. We've seen 26 points scored here in just over four minutes since halftime. And add three more points to that tally, and Raven Justice calls time. 18-11 Bearcats since the break. But still, Raven Justice not pleased with her team's defense. Back for more in Huntsville. Welcome back, Johnson Coliseum. 5.38 left in the third. Bearcats up big over NAIA foe Jarvis Christian. Bearcats break the press. It's Lachey Haynes. And she'll go to the free throw line for two. Well, we talked about coming into this game. How are you going to respond if you're Sam Houston State after the loss at Oral Roberts? Only shooting 28%, 24 turnovers. We're here in this ball game through three quarters. Only 10 turnovers for Sam Houston State. And that is showing up vindicative on the scoreboard, leading 78 to 26. Tamara Sanders came into the foul. Haynes goes to the free throw line. Haynes a fair shooter from free throws this year, seven for 11 before those two. Well, Haynes granted a sixth season of eligibility not too long before the season. So she is another unexpected addition to this team when you think about how to project this Bearcats team in the 2019-20 season. Lachey Haynes was basically a coach on the court last year, transferred to Sam Houston State from Prairie View A&M where she played under Coach Justice. Well, you the just experience go... just grows with Haynes coming back for her sixth year. Yeah, you just go back to the leadership, talking about the seniors on the team, and it's so important to have those, especially someone such as Lachey Haynes who has been here so long. As you said, she could, she might as well coach the team right now. Great job moments ago by Duffy able to get to the line. Well, the Bearcats last year lost to Central Arkansas in the conference tournament, their first trip there since 2016, which ironically was the time they made the conference championship. Open three waved off. They're going to call a foul underneath. A That'll be goal against Alyssa Osborne. Her name of Oz. Out of Spring, Texas, Oak Ridge High School. A junior. Might get flying for the rebound. It will stay with the Bulldogs. Good hustle from Page. We were talking about Osborne just a few moments ago. 
for Sam Houston State right there on the defensive side, putting up her hand and contesting that shot. And that's how it's been. 440. 80-26 Cats, under five minutes left in the third. Some laughs during the commercial break for the students just to our right. Bearcats up big after the timeouts. Inbounded by Jarvis Christian. Top of the key. And a reach in from Jalen Walker. A good effort getting in on the right side there by Brianna Page. And we talked about her in the intro of this ball game. A key player, second leading scorer here for Jarvis Christian. And getting rewarded here, going to the line and shooting two. And Rob, here's where I think the discipline just has to be better. With all due respect to Jarvis Christian. The Bearcats are in foul trouble in a few key spots. In a game, they should not be in foul trouble. Courtney Cleveland, three fouls in 14 minutes. Jalen Walker, three fouls in 13 minutes. That is not going to stand up in the Southland Conference, a conference tournament game against higher quality competition. This should be a cleaner game from Sam Houston State defensively. Yeah, that's for an area shot there on the other end. That's an area, as you said, they've got to clean that up. On the flip side, when they've gotten to the line themselves, 13 of 14, that's impressive. Only missing one free throw here. It's the team on average around 60% from the free throw line. It's good to see those numbers. But you've got to play clean through the entire game. There's a steal from Harrell. 24 points for Rachel Harrell. Harrell really doing it all tonight on the defensive end there with the steal. Four three-pointers here this evening. She has really had a breakout game here early. Deep three, missed by Monroe. It will stay with the Bulldogs. I'll likely ask Coach Justice about that because it's a fine line. She wants them to play intense. She wants them to be in your face against the opposition, but turnovers, fouls, these sort of things that hurts the cause have to be cleaned up. I mean, Jalen Walker's first team all Southland Conference pick. She's the reigning Southland Conference player of the year. She should not have three fouls in under 15 minutes in this game. And there's a carrying call. Unnecessary. Yeah, just things in conference play. And if you're going to commit those, do it here early in the season in non-conference play. But it's definitely something that you want to take care of early. You know, those are some things that Coach is going to talk about, and we'll hear from her at the end of this one. And we say this, mindful of the score. It's 84-28, but we can see Coach Justice throughout the game, and she does not take a play off as a coach. And you can see her emotions on her sleeve when the discipline issues pop up at times with her team. Aisha Fisher misses both. Harrell pulls in the rebound. Henderson. Leg it from the corner. Well, it's been generous shooting from the quarter here this evening, and Leggett finding her spot. Shot goes down. Another fast play for Sam Houston State, an area that they've dominated here in this ballgame. Henderson reaches in. A leg it now 10 of 15 from deep on the season. Not a sustainable number. She was 33% from downtown last year. So she's a good three-point shooter. But if she can shoot 40% or more from downtown, she would be such a weapon for Coach Justice and these cats because she can also drive to the basket. She's a great defender. She's an amazing athlete. But if she can shoot the three ball for the Cats, it adds a different dimension to the Sam Houston State team. I think one of the most exciting things about her as well, only a sophomore, so still plenty of room to grow here for Leggett. And talk about a young lady who has put up, coming into this game, 64 shots from the field. She knows how to shoot, and she can lay them down too, just over 40% on the season. And for Leggett, like we've talked about with Walker and Cleveland, her issue is fouls. 
each game this season, she's committed four or more fouls. She fouled out against Texas Tech in 25 minutes. She has not played, apart from the Louisiana home win, she's not been able to play more than 25 minutes. So foul troubles have negated her numbers, which are good. She's averaging 14 points a game, shooting 43% from the field. She might be at 20 points a game if she was not in foul trouble. And I think for Coach Justice, I would expect her to say, it's good and bad from Leggett. We don't like the foul trouble, but we like the steal. She <laughs> leads the team with 17 steals. You're gonna commit some fouls if you're getting steals all night. It's kind of where do you draw the line? Do you just say, okay, well, as long as you don't foul out, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> but they need her on the court. That, that's the key for me is Leggett's gotta play this season. And she'll learn, she's just a sophomore. No red shirt season, it's her second year out of, call, out of high school. Nice effort Lewis there by with Lewis. two more. She's at four points tonight, a reach-in foul. Well, the thing about Jarvis tonight, you know, being mindful of their play and, and, and what they're doing here is they're finding rhythm inside that paint. They just haven't been able to convert a lot of the shots. Only making one basket in that first quarter alone. And then as things go on, they finally start to find their rhythm a little bit. But I will credit and say, hey, they're getting inside the paint. They just haven't been able to finish many of them. See the push there on the replay, and that's what sent Ramita Henderson to the line, where Sam Houston has just been on fire tonight from the charity stripe. McKinney pulls in the rebound. Henderson finds Harrell. Three more. Fifth time tonight from that three-point line. Making five, call it alive here for Harrell. She has been phenomenal from ball in the arc. 10 of 14 from the field, five of seven from deep. Harold, 27 points in 17 minutes. Open three, a good look, but a miss from Page. Walker clears the rebound out to Harold. Two more. Everything's going in for Rachel Harold. On that previous possession for Jarvis Christian, Deanna Perry had what appeared to be a wide open basket. Instead, she elected to go to that three point shot to Page. It didn't fall in. Sam Houston coasting here through three quarters, 95 to 30, and it's a tough miss there for Aramis. That's been their shot, though, tonight. The transition, the fast break opportunities, that's really where Sam Houston has excelled and at the line, as I've mentioned earlier. Been the best offensive quarter for the Cats, 35 so far in the third. Scored 30 in each of the first two periods. Ball movement has been so critical and key as well for Sam Houston, and a good steal there. A steal, but a missed layup. Hard foul from Leggett. Good to see Harris back to her feet. Uh, Tamia Harris will go to the free throw line. Yeah, Tamia Harris may have thought for a moment she was going to have a shot there. Amber Leggett with her five foot one stature said, no, you're not going to score that on me, committing the foul. But in any case, still a good defensive effort. Harris out of Fort Worth, Texas, at the line right now from Dunbar High School. Just a sophomore at five foot two. Makes both of her free throws there. Henderson. 
Leggett, tough rebound. Ten to shoot for the Cats. Walker. Harrell rebound and a putback. 31 points for Rachel Harrell. It's a new career high. Her previous high was 16. A good fight for the rebound from Harris. Out to Harrell. Shot clock is off. Talks with her coach. Out to Aramis. Six left in the third. Aramis lost it. Now the Bearcats, three points from 100. Their program record, most points in a game, is 128. They will need 32 to surpass that in the fourth quarter. After three in Huntsville, all Sam Houston State. The proud son of hardworking immigrant parents, Eric Rodas chose to serve his country. A father, a soldier, and now a college graduate. He proved that circumstances have nothing to do with your outcome. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Eric determine their future. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. Fourth quarter in Huntsville. Bearcats up 97-32. Amber Leggett will inbound. Jalen Walker receives the inbounds pass. Aramis bypasses the three. Cook was fouled. Well, we were talking, Rob, Justice never stops coaching. We saw her displeasure in the final possession of that third quarter. Yeah, Sam Houston, a commanding lead here, 97 to 32. But that last possession, Sam Houston with the ball, ending the third quarter, they turn it over with just a couple of seconds to go. And those are teaching moments. Even when you have a big lead in a game such as this, you're going to have to correct those things as you head into conference play. And that's why Coach Justice was talking to her team, saying, hey, you can't do that. You've got to find a way to keep that ball. Nice finish from Faith Cook. Shooting was on fire for Sam Houston because they only missed three shots, 13 of 16 in the third. That is impressive. Good hustle from Cook. She saves it off the opponent to keep the basketball with the Cats. Cook, the third player in the double figures for the Cats. Make that the fourth player. Cook, Walker, Leggett, and then Rachel Harrell Curry high, 31 points. She's a point away from doubling her career high back at Houston Baptist on February of 2018. 16. Another reach in foul. Both Monroe and Young. Both with four fouls now for Jarvis Christian. Straight away three, Aramis. A good box out and put back. Batista with her first two of the night. A great job by Batista there inside the paint. Knew where the ball was going to fall. The sophomore Ford stands at six foot two. She used every inch of her frame to pull that down. And again, it's the offensive rebounds leading to points here for Sam Houston State. Nice range, a little step back two for Monroe. She has nine. A steal for the Bulldogs. Cook in transition. Three on one. Baseball pass right to the face of Arama. She misses from six feet. Cook driving to finish. Oh, nice little slice and dice into the right side. 
Once again, the offense rebound leading to another second chance opportunity for the Bearcats, and they're able to capitalize. Nice finish on the other end. Two more for Page. He has 12, three or four of seven from the field. Crown of Page has had a good game here for Jarvis Christian. Not a lot of interior defense being played at the moment. Layup after layup for both sides. That time, Jalen Walker. Offensive rebound, kick out. And a box out foul called underneath on Wall. Yeah, Monroe, the leading scorer here for Jarvis Christian. She just has not been able to find much inside, much on the outside. Is either only nine points here in this ball game. Just been the rebounding of Sam Houston State here in this one. The second chance opportunities that I've talked about so much throughout this game. Able to capitalize. Turnover by Cook. Three on one. Offensive foul. Nice work from Cook. She turned it over, but then she got back and planted her feet. Well, you look over, <laughs> coach may have been frustrated on the front end, and then afterwards, maybe a little redemption taking the charge. Said, you know what? We'll still have a chat, but it may not be as bad. Uh, Justice and Cook talking things over. Cook explaining herself. Coach gives her a pat on the head. Solid leadership. Now 17 turnovers for the Bearcats, too many against an NAIA school. But you also have to caveat all these numbers with the style of play. It's up tempo. They play in transition. They steal the ball. They break out. So it's not like a Princeton offense where they're going to protect the ball, roll the clock down and really manage the basketball well. These turnovers are a byproduct of the system. And you have to take it sometimes. But you hope they're in a manageable number that keep you in these competitive games. Yeah, you brought up the fact that Sam Houston, with their tempo, they shoot quick. You will rarely see this play clock go down to single digits or, or under five. They get the ball up in a hurry. They run back and forth on both sides of the ball. It's evident clearly here tonight in this one. That's just the tempo and the way that they play. There's not a whole lot of set action, just back and forth very quick. Well, we just saw Justice give an instruction to three players as they came off, Leggett, Walker, and Ramina Henderson. along with Madeline Batista. Uh, the coaching session doesn't have to wait till tomorrow. Every time the players come off, if there's something to be said, she will say it. Good effort chasing down that ball as it went off of the toes of McKinney, trying to drive in in the paint. Turnover from Osborne. Yeah, Fisher had a nice hand to tip that one away. Six to shoot. Good defensive possession from the Cats. Well, it all started with Oramas there in that corner, able to hold her defender, forcing passes, and not just a short pass, having to throw that ball all the way across to the other corner. Just great defense by Oramas, able to get a hand up. A miss as the shot clock expired, but a put back from Page. Brianna Page, she's been excellent in the second half. She's up to 12 points. 
Osborne from nine feet, left it short. Wall pulls it out, now lobs it inside. Duncan spinning. Aisha Fisher. Osborne missed it from eight feet. Well, going back to that shot clock, both of those last possessions, keeping an eye on that now, six seconds is all that went off the clock for Sam Houston from the time they got the ball down to the other end of the field and putting up a shot. Just long on that driving layup. And free throws coming, you have to credit Jarvis Christian down big here. They have not given up. They have fought for offensive rebounds. And here in the fourth, it's a one point difference. Sam Houston's outscored him 8-7. Much better than the prior quarters. Their cats up big in the fourth. It's finally here. You can download the Disney Plus app right now and start streaming the best of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic ad free wherever and whenever you want them. For more, go to DisneyPlus.com. Well, we'd like to take this moment to bend a fond farewell to Bree Paget, excellent director, producer of the Bearcat Sports Network. She will depart Huntsville for a year to take on a internship opportunity with Disney in Orlando. It's her last women's game tonight. We want to thank Bree for all of her hard work. So many wonderful folks behind the scenes that make things happen. So good luck, Bree, as you move on. We sincerely appreciate all you and your leadership has done. Well, these are student-run productions. So Sam Houston State students running the cameras. They're in the video room deciding what shot to use, even electing tonight to use the open, which included a basketball coming across Rob and I as we did the open. So they're given editorial license to a long extent here in Huntsville. <laughs> yeah, the, I didn't know, should we laugh? Should we have fun? We just kept calling it as it was. <laughs> you gotta be alert. Oh, it's been a fun crew. Sheridan, Zach, Bree, many others. A lot of folks behind the scenes bringing you these broadcasts of Bearcat Athletics. A 105-39, Bearcats. Coach Justice is sitting down. I think one of the few times tonight we've seen her seated. She's been up, she's been talking to her team throughout every possession of this ball game, even with the commanding lead. Lewis missed the first, made the second. A walker was blocked. Foul called on Fisher. Sam Houston almost putting up 70 shots in this ball game. And that's all started from the things that they have done on the defensive side, the second chance opportunities, turning around, putting the ball up again. You'll see those numbers go up. Well, the Bearcats have surpassed 100 points for the eighth time in program history. It happened a couple times last year. Wiley College, Jarvis Christian back-to-back -back in the early part of the season. Nice finish on the interior by Tamara Duncan. The record, 128 points against UT Pan American back in 1987-88 season. It would take a deluge to reach that number here in the final three minutes, 54 seconds. I was a few years old then. But this is the second most points ever scored. That second most before tonight was against Minnesota back in the 89-90 season. 
but impressive nonetheless here for Sam Houston besides the foul trouble. You'll take any game where you shoot 56, 57% from the field, over 50% from a three-point line. It's not an easy task no matter who you go up against. And then the free throws tonight, I've talked about that throughout this broadcast, going 16 for 18. Get to the line, but make the free throws. They've done it here in this one, Sam Houston State. Reach in foul. Hold on, Brianna Page. Page, our spotlight player in the open for Jarvis Christian. Took her a while to get going in this one, but she's up to a team high 14 points, five of eight, shooting from the field, and now playing with four fouls. Well, Ramita Henderson has had a game for her stat line as well as she has played aggressive, getting back to the line here. Splits the free throws, and then yet again, and, and we talked about the in, the intensity and, and just these players on both sides continuing to play. We're seeing it on both sides. There's still a lot of these young women hitting the floor on every play. Fisher starts the offense with Devani Wall. Nice read from McKinney. Denied the entry pass for the steal. Yeah, I was talking about Romina Henderson earlier who just put up that three there. The shooting for her hasn't really been there tonight. Only three points, but she's been able to distribute the ball. Four assists, moving the ball around, giving her teammates opportunities to score. Bearcats up to 18 steals tonight. Madeline Batista checks in. McKinney goes out. And Amber Leggett returns. Yeah, I mentioned the foul trouble for the Cats. As a team before tonight, the Cats had committed 133 fouls. Their opponents, 87. So such a disparity there. Given the opponents' free throws, you're putting yourself in foul trouble. But again, it's a byproduct of the system The Raven Justice plays. Intense defense for 40 minutes. That fast break opportunity created by Tamara Duncan. She was able to get a hand up on the ball for Jarvis Christian on that side, brings it back to the other. That's a fifth foul on Brianna Page. Good sportsmanship. She's going to jog across the court and shake hands with Raven Justice, the Bearcats head coach. Page had a pretty solid game going five for nine, two for five from the three point line. She had a couple of free throws, made both of them 14 points. Not a bad evening for that young lady. A nice dribbling from Walker. Oh, a miss on the inside. Good look for Batista and a foul committed and the Bearcats suddenly have gone cold. You mentioned their prolific shooting in the third quarter. Now over five minutes without a field goal for the Cats. Yeah, going 0 for 6 during that time span and they were finding so much lanes easy inside the paint. Three point shot there by Jarvis Christian and that's kind of led to it. Jarvis Christian is finding a lot of rhythm now on their side as they're getting up shots. They're moving a lot faster. Aketria Duffy from downtown. Uh, her first three points tonight. Traveling in the corner on Henderson. Henderson kind of looked down at her right foot and said, I don't think I moved that foot, right? <laughs> but she'll get the travel call nonetheless. And Rob, credit to Jarvis Christian. Some teams may have given up or taken their foot off the gas. They've outscored the Cats here in the fourth. 13 to 10. So they were dominated the first three periods. Yeah, and you've seen them on some of their possession. They come out, they roll the ball without touching it. And there's Batista, and you see how much it means to Amber Leggett. Three chest bumps after Batista's layup was there. Yeah, Leggett extremely excited for her teammate. 
Batista, the sophomore, Leggett, the sophomore. These are two solid young women for the Sam Houston State University Bearcat team that are so young and still a lot to learn and a lot to improve on and already doing phenomenal things here at this university. Now the Florida connection between Leggett and Batista. Leggett from Navarre, Batista from Orlando. Well, Sam Houston State clearly in control of this game, but they'll face things coming up on the 8th at UTSA. They'll have to quickly look back on this game, find some improvement. Even though they'll have a commanding victory here, they're still going to have to find things. They'll have to work on the fouls. Turnovers haven't been a huge problem, but as you said earlier against this team, there should have been a lot less here in this ball game. But then it's kind of a, you know, where do you draw the line? Where do you flip the stick? Because a team that, as we talked about, runs so fast and has so much tempo. And look, for the first time tonight, the clock is going to get down to five seconds on the shot clock. Henderson for three. <laughs> now the Cats, 12 of 22, 55% from deep today. Leggett called with a blocking foul. Actually charged that to Cleveland. I thought it was on Leggett. Third foul against Cleveland. A flat-footed three missed by Duffy. teams despite the score on whichever side you want to look at it none of them giving up still playing aggressive still getting to the free throw line everything so critical and a teaching moment on every possession it's one of the joys of not just basketball but any sport there's a teaching moments in every aspect of sports and games Leggett got the rebound. She found Batista and a big smile for Leggett after her teammate score. Batista had no more than five minutes in any game prior. She's getting extended minutes here tonight. Six points in 11 minutes for the sophomore Batista. I'm back the other way, fighting inside. Getting to the free throw line. Cleveland has fouled out in 18 minutes. Eight points, three of four from the field, six rebounds for Courtney Cleveland. High arcing free throw is there for Duffy. First free throw made. She's been to the line twice tonight on her fourth attempt here coming up. Shot clock is off. Jarvis Christian still playing up front here in these final 10 seconds. You have to respect the intensity and the determination just to stay in this until the last second. Now the Bearcats, eighth time in program history, surpassing 100 points, second most points in program history, 14 fewer than their 128 against UT Pan American. We'll take a break, we'll come back with the head coach Raven Justice, the Bearcats beat Jarvis Christian tonight. Sam Houston Memorial Fuel Home was established in September of 2003. 
Our partnership with the Small Business Development Center is just like our partnership with other vendors in our community. We developed a marketing plan, a strategic analysis, as well as social media presence. If you let them, they can take your dream, put it to paper. That's the way we got started, and 13 years later, we're very happy to be a part of this community. Welcome back, post game. Bearcat celebrating this one with the fans. Second most points in program history, the Bearcats beat Jarvis Christian 114 to 46, and will be joined by the head coach of the Bearcats momentarily, Raven Justice. Had a good moment there with Jarvis Christian head coach Derek Hallman before coming over. And now coach will sit down and chat with us for a couple minutes. Well, coach, a tough road trip. Oral Roberts on Saturday, a couple Power Five foes before that. An opponent you know a little bit from last season. What'd you make of tonight's game? You know, the biggest thing is, like you said, we had some struggles on the road. You know, I thought we had to get back to our home ground and, and take some, some practices um, to hard and take some um, drawing board um, work. So I think the kids played hard, but you know, after you've been on the road and somebody beat you, you know, you gotta come back and get refocused. Rachel Hill, a career high tonight, over 30 points. She had a few early from deep, but then she was finding her mid-range game. She's, she's worked hard the last week. I mean, she's been in the gym um, before practice, after practice, um, coming in, getting some shooting sessions in. You know, I think she's very deserving of it. She's a, a senior that's been there for four years, so she's seen the up and downs of the program. To see her rewarded tonight was pretty priceless. We talked about it on the broadcast. Foul trouble at times this season. Leggett's been outstanding, 14 points a game. She's been shooting the three, but four fouls or more in every single game. How hard of, is that for you as a coach to walk that fine line? You want intense defense, but you need your players on the floor. Absolutely, and it's something I've struggled with the last um, couple of games. And, you know, she plays in a hurry. You know, it doesn't matter if I say we're playing zone, she's going to be aggressive with it. So, you know, I think the biggest thing is for her to just take a deep breath sometime and just allow the um, basketball game to come to her. All right, now an important road trip. You go back on the road, beginning with UTSA and then Oklahoma. What do you take from this game and an important thing going on the road to UTSA? You know, I think the biggest thing is um, we shot the ball well tonight. You know, I hadn't been pleased with our shooting. You know, we hadn't shot it poorly, but we hadn't shot it as good as I thought we could shoot it. So um, I think that's what we take from this game. You know, you're going to have, as fast as we play, we're going to have some situations that I'm not pleased with. But if the effort's there, you know, I can live with those. Coach, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. That's Raven Justice after her team scores 100. So long from Huntsville with the final score is the Bearcats 114, Jarvis Christian 46. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.